Welcome to a lesson on solving differential equations using substitution. Just as when solving integrals, one method to try to solve a differential equation is to change variables to end up with a simpler equation to solve. Let's consider the differential equation y prime equals the square of the quantity x minus y plus one. Notice the differential equation is not separable, it's also not linear. Let's try a change of variables so that in the new variables the equation is simpler. We will use another variable v, which we will treat as a function of x, and we'll let v equal the base on the right of x minus y plus one. Again, it's important to remember here, we're treating v as a function of x. And now we need to find y prime for the left side of the equation. To do this, we differentiate both sides of the equation, v equals x minus y plus one with respect to x, which I've shown here on blue on the right. The derivative of v with respect to x is v prime. The derivative of x with respect to x is one. The derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. And the derivative of one with respect to x is zero. This gives us v prime is equal to one minus y prime. Solving for y prime, we have y prime equals one minus v prime. And now we perform substitution. We can now substitute one minus v prime for y prime and v for the quantity x minus y plus one. This gives us a differential equation. One minus v prime equals v squared. Solving for v prime, we have v prime equals one minus v squared, which we should recognize as a separable differential equation. Replacing v prime with dv dx, we have dv dx equals one minus v squared. Separating the variables, we have one divided by the quantity one minus v squared dv equals dx. And now we integrate both sides of the equation. Now if we wanted to, we could multiply the numerator and denominator of the fraction on the left by negative one, which gives us negative one divided by the quantity v squared minus one. I'm gonna go ahead and use the integrand function in this form, because for the next step, we need to perform partial fraction decomposition so that we can more easily determine the indefinite integral. So again, we start with negative one divided by the quantity v squared minus one, and then we factor the denominator, which gives us the quantity v plus one times the quantity v minus one. We set this equal to a over the first factor of v plus one plus b over the second factor of v minus one. Next, we multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD, which gives us the equation negative one equals a times the quantity v minus one plus b times the quantity v plus one. And now we'll let v equal one. Notice when v is equal to one, v minus one is zero, giving us the equation negative one equals two b, and therefore b equals negative one half. And if v is equal to negative one, v plus one is zero, giving us the equation negative one equals negative two a, and therefore a equals one half. Subbing a and b into the equation above, we now know the original integrand function is equal to one half divided by the quantity v plus one minus one half divided by the quantity v minus one. So going back over to the integral, if we factor out the one half, we can write the left side as one half times integral of the difference of one divided by the quantity v plus one and one divided by the quantity v minus one dv. And on the right we have the integral of one dx. And now we integrate both sides. On the left, we have one half times the difference of the natural log absolute value of v plus one and natural log absolute value of v minus one. And we'll include the constant on the right. On the right we have x plus c. And now we need to work on solving for v. Let's first use the log properties and combine the two logarithms because we are subtracting. We can write the left side as one half times natural log of the absolute value of the quotient of v plus one and v minus one. Next, we will multiply both sides of the equation by two, which I've shown here in blue, which gives us natural log absolute value of the quotient is equal to two x plus two c. And now we'll write the log equation as an exponential equation, where we can exponentiate both sides of the equation with the base of e. Writing the log equation as an exponential equation, natural log has base e. The equivalent exponential equation is e to the power of two x plus two c is equal to the quotient of v plus one and v minus one. We can drop the absolute value here because the exponential term on the right is always positive. Now looking at the right side of the equation, e to the power of two x plus two c can be written as e to the power of two x times e to the power of two c, and e to the power of two c is just some constant, and therefore we can let e to the power of two c just be equal to d, which gives us the quotient of v plus one and v minus one 
equals d times e to the power of 2x. Before we continue, it is important to recognize that v equals one and v equals negative one does satisfy the differential equation one minus v prime equals v squared. And now that we have our solution in this form here, we need to write the solution back in terms of x and y using the equation v equals x minus y plus one. So in blue here on the left, again, v is equal to x minus y plus one, performing that substitution for v here and simplifying, we get x minus y plus two divided by the quantity x minus y equals d times e to the power of two x. And also two solutions are x minus y plus one equals one, or y equals x, and x minus y plus one equals negative one, or y equals x plus two. The way we get these two solutions, again, is to remember that v equals one and v equals negative one are solutions. So performing the substitution for v, which again I've shown here on the left, when v is equal to one, we get y equals x. Again, by substituting x minus y plus one for v, and then for v equals negative one, again, performing the same substitution for v, we get the solution y equals x plus two. So now going back to our equation here where we have the quantity x minus y plus two divided by the quantity x minus y equals d times e to the power of two x, we need to work on solving for y. Let's first multiply both sides of the equation by x minus y, which is this first line here. Next, we distribute the d times e to the power of two x. And the next step, we get all the y terms on the left and all the non-y terms on the right. Next, we factor y from the left side and then divide both sides by the quantity negative one plus d times e to the power of two x, which gives us y equals the quantity d x e to the two x minus x minus two, all divided by the quantity d e to the two x minus one. When d equals zero, we do get the solution y equals x plus two, but no value of d does give the solution y equals x, which means for our final solution, we should give this equation here where d is any constant, as well as y equals x. So as we see, substitution in differential equations is applied in much the same way that it is applied in calculus. And there are some general patterns to look for when trying to use substitution to solve a differential equation, which is shown here in the table. When we see the products on the left, we wanna try the substitutions on the right. Usually you try to substitute in the most complicated part of the equation with the hopes of simplifying it. The table above is just a rule of thumb. You might have to modify your guesses. If a substitution does not work, then the only choice is to try a different one. I hope you found this helpful.